Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for giving up your lunch hour. And I am wearing official robes today. This is our Standing on the Side of Love t-shirt that we wear to social justice events. The ancient Taoist philosopher is Lao Tzu is said to have said, if there is to be peace in the world, there must be peace in the nations. If there's to be peace in the nations, there must be peace in the cities. If there is to be peace in the cities, there must be peace between neighbors. If there is to be peace between neighbors, there must be peace in the home. And if there is to be peace in the home, there must be peace in the heart. Peace is such a broad concept. When I speak the word, some of you might think of the refugees Audrey just mentioned, other of the cessation of war, still others ending nuclear proliferation. And I suspect some of you are also thinking about the end to domestic violence uh, and justice for the missing and murdered women. Perhaps you're thinking of environmental peace or peace between the First Nations and the uh, Federal Nation. And maybe a few of you are even thinking about a nice cup of tea and a little peace and quiet at the end of the day, at the end of your busy schedule. There is so much wrapped up in this idea of peace. Over the course of the next week, the Yeg Peace Fest events will offer several different approaches to peace for you to consider. So try to take some more of them in. But today, let's look at what peace, about the peace that we can make and find in small communities of people. If there's to be peace in the cities, there must be peace between neighbors. The 20th century liberal theologian who happened to be a Unitarian, James Luther Adams, he lived and studied in Germany in the 1930s, and he watched the rise of Nazism. And he saw how small communities were forced and co-opted into doing some fairly heinous things. And he concluded that the only way to build peace and trust among people is not through fear, but to structure similar small bodies around a different guiding principle. It was the principle of volunteerism. He called them voluntary associations. Not terribly creative, but he was a theologian, not a poet. No one would be forced to join these voluntary associations, but they wanted, they were designed to participate in the building of communities and cities. They had to be based on principles of freedom of association and goodwill. Everyone had to have a voice and the right to speak freely and deeply. He believed that that would give each person ownership. The community league model that we see here in Edmonton is a good example of what Adams was trying to seek. People coming together to carry out neighborhood sport and social activities, to discuss shared concerns and pass them on to the folks who work in that building. Many of the community leagues in the city work very well at doing that. And a good many of our city councilors start in the community league level. The small community, and we each belong to many, whether it's churches or work organizations or neighborhood groups or sporting events, some are more healthy than others, but when it is a truly free and designed to be a safe place, where it's a place where we can practice peacemaking, where we can learn to accept diversity of opinion, find support for our hopes and dreams and comfort in hard times. And in these small communities, this is where we take our first peacemaking steps. Talking to one another, examining our own beliefs, and sharing our insights with others. And when we start with ourselves, when we start speaking from the heart, and more importantly, when we start listening from the heart to opinions that are different from ours, those are the very first steps of peacemaking at a community level. Another way to name the peacemaking process is to call it community building. On Saturday, we held the first ever Festival of Faiths right there in City Hall, bringing a large number of groups into contact and conversation. It was peacemaking and it was an excellent day. And I still marvel when I say it took place here in City Hall. 
that seat of municipal government of ours is so open and welcoming to such events and that qualifies as peacemaking work too. I've lived in four major world cities. This is the first one that I've ever been to City Hall and I've been here, I don't know, 50, 60 times for different events. This is an amazing resource we have that is not the standard around the world. As we build peace the gift of this place, once called the Temple of Government by a former Catholic Archbishop, cannot be understated. This is the place of peacemaking, though perhaps last week the cabbies and the fans of Uber may not have fully agreed. The point is, people talked. They talked loudly, but they talked. The peace of small communities and cities is an important step, but let's remember what we bring to those small communities. The very bottom rung of Lao Tzu's ladder, if there's to be peace in the community and the home, there must be peace in the heart. There will be no peace if we live our personal lives out of a place of hate and anger. First, we have to make peace with ourselves and then with the people around us. Not the people who think like us, but the people who don't think like us. That's our first step to becoming peace builders in the world. Thank you.